So uh, an absolute boss of a fella ended up taking some screen caps for the patch notes for Hotfix 22 before they ended up getting retracted from the Discord. As of right now, uh, we know that Hotfix 22 is coming today, but the patch notes ended up getting pulled from the server before uh, a lot of people had a chance to read them. However, we do have screen caps of the changes, and I'm going to share them with you. I don't want to throw the person under the bus that took the screen caps, though, uh, but he's an absolute boss. Anyway, TLDR, for those of you that want a TLDR and you don't feel like sitting through the whole video or whatever, they're adding High Roller to Ruins. With this patch, they are working on allowing solos, duos, and trios to play across all of the maps in a future update. The friends list is being added today, and there are major changes, buffs to both Barbarian and Warlock. Warlock is being made great again. It actually looks really amazing on paper. Okay, that's the TLDR. But I'm going to go into the notes here with you for those of you that want to see everything. Uh, and Wizards are being adjusted after Image was broke, and, and they're, they're bringing After Image back. Anyway, on to the notes. Fix an issue where After Image of Wizards invisibility did not appear. Explosion was interacting with unintended colliders that caused damage that has been fixed. Lanterns were recognized as weapons. That is not supposed to be a thing. Sorry, Slayer Fighters, you're going to have to hold two weapons now. Fix an issue where the item information tooltip wasn't properly displayed when quest items could be canceled. Purchases not registering smoothly when purchasing an item multiple times. Fixed a bug where the tail with the final tailor quest you now need 10 Ghost King kills. However, uh, credit for quest kills are now given to all party members. And this is true for all kills in the dungeon awarding AP as well. They made adjustments in these, in these patch notes saying that now there's going to be party credit for all kills, not just whoever gets the last hit, which was the biggest problem, especially with the boss kill stuff, where people had to get last hits on everything and you weren't getting party quest progression. And this is huge. This is a huge quality of life adjustment. It will help people dramatically with trying to get their quest progression done. Very, very nice. Barbarian's base vigor has been reduced from 30 to 25, and base agility increased from 8 to 13. Iron Will has been updated with the additional magic resistance increased from 60 back to 100. So they're giving Barb's more resistances, but less health. Barb's robust perk health increase increased from 10 to 15%. Rage temporarily increases vigor by 15. Barbarian's blood exchange health penalty reduced from 30% negative to negative 20. Dagger mastery, physical damage bonus increased from 10 to 20%. This could actually bring daggers back in at least a little bit especially if you're using like a chris dagger because they have a lot of damage rogues thrust perk armor penetration increase from 15 to 20 percent cutthroat skills silence time has been increased from three seconds to five seconds chain lightning spell damage for wizards modified from 35 across the board to 35 30 25 20 so now chain lightning isn't going to do nearly as much damage after the first target which is also interesting and could end up being something where chain lightning isn't nearly as useful as it used to be wizards explosion spell damage decreased from 35 to 30 so explosion getting nerfed as well shocking wizard nerfs who would have thought now on to warlock warlocks now start with a falchion and a crystal ball as default weapons this is a massive buff to their base kit away from the staff huge warlock's curse of weakness spells reduction of all attributes improved from negative 20 to negative 25 percent which is actually pretty nice but still i don't think curse of weakness gets used that much ray of darkness this is crazy spell damage per second increase from 6 to 12 so let's just do some math like real quick let's say you have a purple staff which is 10 magical damage on the staff and then you have the base amount of damage from uh ray of darkness which now it's being buffed to 12 right so that's 22 damage per second it means someone around 100 hp assuming that they don't have an amazing amount of magic resist if you're able to keep the beam on them for the five out of seven ticks the five of seven seconds worth of cast time that's going to melt someone that's around 100 health it just kills them however that's not where we're done yet let's say the warlock has 50 percent magic power increase which is kind of standard for somebody that's about mid-gear level. So if we do that and we multiply this out by 1.5, or actually, I'll take that back, let's say that they have the 10% dark damage perk, which if you're running this, you probably should have, which makes this a 1.6x. So you have 22 times 1.6 for a 60% increase. Now you're at 35.2. That is before you add in any damage additions from any of your other gear. So the helmet is capable of having two points. The neck can have three points. Uh, each of the rings is two each. And then the cloak can have another two, which is a total of 11. So if you had damage on everything, you're adding another 11 damage per second on top of that, which puts you at 46.2 
damage per second. That, if you were able to actually keep the beam on a target over the entire 7 second duration, would equal 323.4 damage. That is wild. That will destroy people. Meme Beam could actually have been made great. We'll have to test it and see. But that is crazy. Anyway, moving on. Warlock Soul Collector perk Dark Magic Damage has been increased per stack from 5 to 10%. Now, before you get all hopped up on Soul Collector, remember that the only good thing about Soul Collector is that it works for the damage reflect, which is huge because it'll make damage reflect do even more damage than it was doing before with stack damage, uh, which, by the way, the damage reflect perk is 100% scaling on magical damage. If you really want to hurt some people, run Soul Collector and that perk, and it will hit people that hit you like a truck. It hits really hard. That's going to be like 40, maybe even 50 damage. I haven't done the math on it, but that'll be crazy if you actually have a decked out Warlock. But Soul Collector doesn't work for Meme Beam. It only affects like the very first tick. It's not worth having for that. But the anti-magic shell will. So if you can get a beam off as the shell ends, it could be worth. You'll have to play with it and see. But the, the huge percentage bump on that would be something. Warlock's anti-magic perk magic resist improved from 15 to 25%. Now that could actually end up being worth running. They're really going hard on anti-wizard stuff. Vardish movement speed penalty reduced from 50 to 45. Battle axe movement speed 45 to 40. Double axe movement speed 45 to 40. Felling axe movement speed 40 to 35. Zweihander's movement speed reduced from 45 to 40. The Goblin Cave's normal layout has been added to the Goblin Cave high roller. So you're going to see both sets of maps on HR now. The Ruins high roller has been added. Elite and Nightmare monsters will be updated gradually adventurer tiers track separately from the ruins high roller there you go so now there's going to be a separate uh tracking list for ruins hr adventure point entrance fees for each map have been adjusted we slightly reduced the ap entrance fees as we were seeing less than one percent of hr players able to reach the middle rank of pathfinder so again we'll have to see how that plays adventure points gained from adventuring and killing monsters is now split between the party however treasure gains upon escaping are still calculated individually which by the way treasure is the bolus of this entire thing if you want to rise in the leaderboard carry as much high grade treasure out of there as you possibly can gear doesn't have nearly as much weight the curve table used to calculate the amount of ap for a pvp kill has been slightly adjusted upward so killing an enemy player will give slightly more ap there you go added alchemist and surgeon quests big dub credit for quest kills are now credited to all members of a party there you go items that can be purchased and crafted have been adjusted according to merchant's affinity in general rare quality crafts unlock at 50 epic is 100 and legendary are 150 so it depends on how far down you get the quest list some of the quests give affinity and some don't basically the 150 affinity is when you get all the way to the end traps and throwing weapons are now available from the woodsman in limited quantities even at the neutral affinity merchants will now sell epic items at the highest affinity remove the limited stock for crafting ingots and powders reduce the amount of Silver coins required for silver ingots from 300 down to 120, and powder is 120 to 90. So that's good. Reduce the amount of ore required to create ingots down to 3 from 5. That's massive. And powders from 3 to 2. Also massive. This ingot change is going to like completely change everything. That's so nice. Significantly increase the amount of gold a merchant gives when they buy higher grade weapons and armors from the player. Okay. The leaderboard now shows your rank and total score. So there you go. I guess the video I made yesterday doesn't need to happen anymore. The trade channel has been streamlined with a single general weapon and armor channel. So things are going to end up being very spammy and use your filters. Added the friends system. You will need to create an account name when you first log into the game after the hotfix. This account name will be used to search for your friends. There you go. So that is the entire set of patch notes that were preliminary posted, preliminarily posted on the Discord. Um, again, grain of salt. This is subject to change, but the modifications to the Warlock alone will be massive. That could actually bring Warlock into something usable as more of an anti-mage style of character as opposed to somebody that still doesn't really know what they're doing. I don't think for threes it's still going to be nearly as viable, but making the beam be something that is uh, scary uh, is nice. That's super nice. And I'm, I'm looking forward to building out a warlock and, uh, and testing that. That should be really, really fun. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming and checking this out. This video, uh, once it's live, I will be live over at twitch.tv slash one peg and simulcasting live here on YouTube as well. Please come by and, uh, and come and hang out and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay. Thanks. Peace.